All right, guys. Welcome back to the shop. Got uh, my next project laying here. I've already got it this far. Uh, this video here will show me using my track torch to cut all these pieces out. Um, got some shaper time. I took the the flame cut edge off with the shaper, and then I took them to the mill and squared them up. You know. Uh, what this is, it's going to be an angle plate, <clears throat> or my attempt to make an angle plate. Um, I, it'll be nine inches wide, and almost nine inches tall. Um, it's five-eighths plate. I thought about making it and bolting it all together with cap screws and getting it all square and start tacking and uh, I think this will be fine if I get enough clamps to do it with <clears throat> and these are half inch gussets that I did um, it'll bolt down to my mill table and I'll I really don't want to put any holes or anything in it unless I need them I'd rather clamp whatever I need to it. These gussets will get moved in just so I can clamp something or you know I'll see how it works out. You know I don't know if this style of gusset here is going to be a good idea or not because wanting to clamp something I really can't come in through. You know I started the cut out the whole triangle and I didn't like it. My mill is not rigid enough using a, a one inch end mill to cut that out but so I just I finished out one side for you know hand holds you know, everything's rounded off and I mean it's comfortable and but I think I'm still gonna need to cut this out more just in case I need to stick a clamp through to clamp something so I'll probably try to finish that at some point. Um, you know, I, I try to get it to where I can come in a little, but I know the farther in I go, the warpage up here on the plate is going to get really bad because it's really going to pull, and it'll pull that in quite a bit. It'll pull this in, and that'll dip, and then. <clears throat> I mean, I'm going to MIG wire it, and I don't know. I, I, I still, I've, I've welded for so many years, I can just see what it's going to do. I know what it's going to do. It's going to move like crazy, and it's going to be a lot of surface milling to get it straightened back up. But luckily, I do have a, a friend of mine that is a machinist, and I'm sure he could take it in for me and we can grind it on their big grinder. So, alright, this video is going to basically show you up to this point ish, and there might be a, a video or two after it. Alright, yeah, guys, enjoy. Running it along here just to get the moisture out of it, start putting some heat in it. Good deal.
hurt the shaper. Got my part in there and been walking around for five minutes looking for tape measure. Um, what we're gonna do is I kind of got it in there. I don't have the vise. I don't have it. I don't have it tightened down yet. But I got a piece in there. And got my tool changed and ready to go. Um, but I'm gonna go over the settings of this, and uh, you know, it might be a good time. You know, I can tell you a little bit about it. Um, this is a 1960 um, Cincinnati 24 inch sh standard shaper. Um, It does, this is a, an electric clutch. Now Steve Summers and Adam Booth, their shapers are hydraulic driven. But inside here is a, looks like a big clutch, like, you know, it's just electric clutch. Uh, you flip the switch and it engages and everything spins. There's no hydraulics. And that's the only bad thing about it. Those guys, their shapers, as soon as you turn them on, they start oiling the system. You know, mine doesn't do that. It only runs and it only spins the pump when the bull gear is spinning. So that's the only downside, but it's, it's a little tighter. You know, I got a oil pressure gauge over here and, uh, and it rides anywhere from 20 to 40 pounds on that gate on that on that dial so it's not too bad but we'll get it fired up so now I got us got an electric switch back here on I think that's what was in here on the back they got that long lever right here and they can they can kind of control it that's they can put pressure on it and they can they can set the speed i don't have that option mine's on or off so it's, you really got to pay attention to those anything isn't going to hit like if you're working with your work here you don't want your ram to come out and smack your work so you got to definitely make sure you're low enough and then bring it up to it but right now i'm going to what I need to tape measure for. Got a little over nine inches. So I'm gonna set my stroke to ten inches. There's a ten inch stroke. Slow this sucker down a little bit. Take this nut, ram nut loose. This is the only thing that holds it. There's a threaded rod in there and it goes back to a big nut back here. And that's what sets your, your stroke and if you don't have this thing tight, because that's what hold, that's what hits, makes all holds all the impact. If you didn't have that set, all that force transfers to that big screw that's in there. And I'd hate to think what would happen if you hit something hard, taking a big cut on something. It'd probably just bend that thing all hell. But got to take it loose, <clears throat> and then you can. You set it out here how far you want it to come out past.
go a little further. I think I could shorten this up a little bit. For a second, so my oil pressure gauge it kind of floats around 40. And right here, that's your depth of cut, how, how your stroke. Yeah, I got it. it's a little over nine inches right now. This dial right here, this is your how much you want it to feed. It's your feed stroke, and it'll go all the way from ten thousandths all the way to one hundred and seventy thousandths step over. This this uh, lever here is an A B. It's kind of a high low. Right now it's up into the B which is the low speed and all the bees you can get uh, in this setting right here it's with the lever that's down below where it's set right now on the B is 21 strokes a minute there's 29 strokes a minute 10 strokes and 14 strokes a minute and then you can switch it over to the A I'll have to bump the ram. Get going to the gear. There. There's 64 strokes. That's usually that's where I'll be cutting it at 44 strokes a minute. You know, it'll go all the way up to 129 strokes a minute. People say, yeah. I, I actually did test it to see the I had it on 129 by accident thinking I was cutting 29. And I fired it up, and this thing moved probably six inches on the floor when that ram came back, because it comes back at probably all 100 mile an hour, probably. You know, I thought the thing was going to shoot right through the back door. But people say they don't know what they would use that for, but the only thing I can think of, because I did try it, I said, to, like, if you have a piece of bar cutting a key stock or cutting something small, I set it up for three inch stroke and had it at 129 strokes a minute. The thing runs beautiful. I mean, it'll cut something in half in no time. So, I think that's probably what it was intended for, a real short stroke, because if you had it down on 44 strokes a minute, you know, cutting a two inch piece of bar, that would take forever but you can you can bump up your speed you know you'll go up to 94 strokes a minute you can, you could flatten out a two inch piece of bar stock in no time but but I'll be running it at 40 on the a a and 44 strokes a minute a little over nine inches on the stroke and I'll probably only do a 10,000 step over Now right here, this is, these are your dials, that's for your, the, the raise and lower the table, right here, and this is for your feed in, in thousands, and this is the lever for your power feed, so, and that engages that, so when it's in neutral, you can just manually do it or move it around, or if you're feeding down, you'll have it in neutral, and then you'll just turn this dial up here to run it down you know you can you can turn this this head 
and whatever whatever degree you want um, I played with it a little bit when I was making my toll holders I was going to do the dovetail with this and I just I haven't done it enough to to, to trust myself to use it yet I think it's, it's still a matter of you just got to do it but I was playing with it some time ago and here's a one inch HHS HHS broke this sucker right in half I'm glad it broke this instead of the bowl gear but I was just doing some finish work I got it you know I got it cut tapered you know it's it's done right I think I didn't need to like this bottom down here I didn't need to go I think that's like a 20 some degree I think all I needed like three or four degree like the sides you know it's got a side rake and I mean it was doing a great job and then all of a sudden it just grabbed and I shut it off and loosened the, the nut here and this piece fell out oh, wow okay so yeah I just I gotta doing what I'm gonna do I don't have a problem with doing it but so, you know there's uh, the door 24 inch standard Cincinnati Shaper Company US of A the cool thing about this see that or not this is Navy property and then from there uh, that's a US US Air Force base that's a US USAF so the Air Force had this for a while and there's the property of government sticker now we have some information down here I don't know if I'll try I'll get pictures of everything and and put them at the end of the video that way you can read everything it, camera blows everything out but. so this has been around the military for several years I noticed that when I was taking it apart to get it brought home it weighs a little over 6,000 pounds but every piece on it has a number I don't know you can see the seal right there and they, they put it everywhere every piece that would have went into a crate or if it got shipped that way the, the, the serial number of this machine had the stamps on it so it, it's, it's basically scattered every piece has it on it so I thought that was kind of cool but Sorry for the shaky camera. We got I'm an old dude, so my hands aren't near as steady as they used to be. I'll get the cameras moved around and whatnot and get the vise tightened up and, and we'll see if I can clean up all that that fired metal that's on there. It's probably pretty hard. So Alright, I'll bring you back.